One day, suddenly, a dimensional gate appeared in the sky of the world, and shortly thereafter, similar gates began to be discovered from all over the earth. These gates gradually became common. However, they seem to cause no harm to the living creatures on earth, and the reason why they appeared has not yet been clarified by the government and scientists. People around the world are becoming increasingly anxious about this phenomenon. News reports continue to cover this phenomenon, while experts are urgently researching. They believe that there may be dangerous alien creatures that could pass through the gates and harm the Earth. Despite the gates being there and nothing dangerous happening yet, people are still anxious but have to continue living their daily lives, working to make ends meet. Han Yuan is our main character at present. He is currently working as a mover for a middle-aged couple. Being young and energetic, he always works with enthusiasm and diligence. He is highly regarded by the couple. However, the real motivation for his work is to earn money to support his younger brother through college. Their parents passed away early, and the two siblings rely on each other to live. Besides his work, Han Yuan also bears the responsibility of a parent. He has sacrificed himself so that his younger brother can have the best life possible. Han Yuan shows pictures of his younger brother to the couple. He is truly handsome, very much resembling Han Yuan himself. Han Yuan always speaks proudly of his younger brother, unable to stop praising him whenever he talks about the person he's proud of. Today, his brother will finish school early, so they plan to pick him up, and the three of them will go out to eat something delicious, maybe barbecue or something. Talking about his brother, Han Yuan always has a smile full of happiness. At the same time, Han Yuan's younger brother is also on the bus heading home after school. Han Yuan sits on the seat, gazing into the distance toward the gate hovering in the sky. Returning to Han Yuan, he and the couple have boarded the car, preparing to go to the moving destination. Suddenly, the boss points to the gate and says something vague about it. Many people have left because of worries. It suddenly appeared. Nobody knows if it's a good omen or a bad one. Han Yuan mentions there seems to be another one in the area where his brother usually goes to school. Observing the gate, he feels something strange. He asks vaguely, does that thing always have this color, sir? The boss replies, it seems greener than usual. Suddenly, a strong impact from behind their car causes all three to panic, thinking there has been an accident. Han Yuan rushes out to check, but as soon as he steps out, before him is a horrifying sight. Atop the car is a giant creature with a strange shape, and more importantly, its drool is dripping down ominously. Looking into its eyes, he can see it's a flesh-eating creature, very dangerous. It immediately lets out a roar and rushes to attack Han Yuan. He hastily dodges, luckily avoiding the deadly jaws. However, the car isn't as fortunate. Its jaws penetrate through, causing the car to collapse under the force of the attack. Yuan screamed in horror the boss and the lady boss simultaneously as well. Around them were the desperate screams of others. Yuin's eyes grew fearful as he looked up at the sky from within that gate. Hundreds of monsters resembling birds rushed out, their hunger evident as they appeared exceedingly aggressive. They attacked every living creature they saw, and within moments, the city fell into chaos. Those gates were linked to another world known as the Abyss. From that dimensional gate, monsters from the Abyss pulled each other out, forming packs of bloodthirsty creatures. As they flew out, they mercilessly slaughtered any creature in their sight. The abyss erupted due to its excessive tension, lacking space, forcing the monsters to find their way out. From there, the catastrophe unfolded uncontrollably. Millions were injured, though some luckily survived. However, tens of thousands were not so fortunate. Nationwide statistics revealed that over 10,000 lives were lost. Returning to Yuin, Although fearful, you couldn't just stand by and watch as the monster intended harm to your employers. Gathering up all your courage, you grabbed a nearby stick with the intention of rushing forward to rescue them. Just as you were about to act, strong hands emerged from within, tightly gripping the monster's mouth and pushing it back. It was your employer, managing to control the large creature effortlessly. She shouted loudly, warning her husband, quickly, run, the master, Bewildered, still showed concern, asking what had happened. She didn't know either, explaining that her body suddenly acted on instinct. This was the awakening of her power, coinciding with the appearance of the monsters. These awakened individuals possessed enough strength to fight against them. Those who awakened their abilities would become hunters, seeking out and destroying the creatures emerging from the dungeons. 
This would soon become one of the top priorities. Yu Han's younger brother, Yu Han, whom you deeply cherished, awakened with the power of Black Flame Seal, becoming one of the world's first grade S hunters eight years after the unexpected incident at the Dungeon Gate. It seemed everything was under control. On the television, an awakened person was demonstrating their abilities. However, the reporter in front of her couldn't see anything. She explained that it was a status window only visible to awakened individuals, displaying the list of skills they possessed. This girl, named Yumi, had the ability to rapidly grow plants in a specific area. Following this, she showcased a skill that made everyone except for those awakened gasp in amazement. Eight years ago, she awakened, perhaps due to the untidiness of her living environment, which led to the growth of green and red mold. Consequently, she gained the ability to create vines, which proved to be very useful in rescuing people. She also joined the guild and became a hunter, seeking to eliminate the monsters and attack the dungeons. Attacking the dungeons could yield rare materials, although it was difficult and dangerous. However, the profits were substantial. There were high-level dungeons containing treasure troves, with the most valuable item being mana crystals, each worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hence, they attracted many professional hunters, especially the famous Hanun from Korea. Even as a high school student, he awakened the powerful flame seal. This made him strong enough to establish his own guild named Abyss, becoming the youngest guild leader. Returning to Yumi, although she was only an E-rank hunter, she was very diligent in her hunting endeavors. With the sole desire of earning enough money to pay for her siblings' tuition fees, she hunted tirelessly. However, shortly after, the news reported her lively figure, informing that she had perished in a dungeon raid. Despite being rushed to the hospital, her injuries were too severe, and she couldn't survive. While it brought in high income, it was also cruel. They could lose their lives at any moment. In a dimly lit room, a young man sat alone in front of the TV, contemplative, surrounded by empty bottles from another day, outside the gates. A gathering of people seemed to be preparing for a dungeon raid. Someone in the group spoke up irritably. Boss, what's the deal bringing someone like him along? He pointed towards the distance with a very uncomfortable demeanor. It wasn't Han Yu, the S-rank hunter, but rather Han Yu Jin who awakened after the dungeon explosion that day. However, unlike his sibling who achieved the S-rank, he only awakened to the E-rank with the derogatory title of caregiver. It seemed life in Yuan had been quite tough for him. He had to beg to join hunting groups to enter dungeons and make a living, constantly enduring derogatory remarks from selfish individuals. Indeed, living in a world where V-rank hunters were revered, those with low abilities were always looked down upon as societies refuse. Yu only managed to join a group because his higher price was very low. He accompanied the team, enduring relentless verbal abuse pouring from their mouths like trash parasites sucking his blood. For Yuan, this was his flaw because he didn't know how he could still survive after all the groups he joined were slaughtered by monsters. Insults then turned towards his younger brother. Ever since Yu Jin lost his leg, his brother hadn't returned to this group, with people speculating it was because he considered Yu as trash, hence abandoning him. Yuan could endure insults and humiliation, no matter how harsh they were. But mentioning his younger brother made him extremely angry. Yuan stood up abruptly, grabbing the arrogant guy by the collar. He stared directly into his eyes, his voice full of anger. Shut your filthy mouth before I shut it for you. Yuan's gaze was filled with the desire to punch him and throw him into the trash. But the truth remained, he was just a weak pawn. The arrogant guy just chuckled lightly and easily lifted Yuan by the collar, as if handling a child. Yuan could only submit without resistance. After a few hits, the guy tossed him aside and left, not forgetting to utter a few scornful words. Though enraged, Yuan reluctantly wiped away the blood from his mouth. The boss seemed somewhat friendly, advising Yuan that he was just a supported pawn, so he should try to restrain himself. Yuan brushed off his grievances and tried to return to a cheerful demeanor. Yet the boss's friendliness made him feel uneasy, prompting Yuan to apologize. I'm sorry for any trouble, sir. I know it must be difficult for you to mediate for us. The boss graciously accepted his apology, acknowledging Yuan as the only one who recognized his efforts. Turning back to the arrogant guy, the boss warned him not to bully Yuan further, emphasizing his lack of knowledge about the dungeon and monsters. Yuan, standing behind, demonstrated his skills to intimidate the guy, targeting the boss. 
His insults faded into insignificance, futile against Ewan's prowess. With that settled, they ventured into the dungeon, facing dangers but easily overcoming them. These low-level monsters posed no threat to them in this dungeon, yet defeating them yielded valuable mana crystals. Even small ones fetched thousands of dollars for the hunters. Yud's task was to excavate for these crystals diligently. Despite the overseer's continuous mockery, Yuan persisted, singing to alleviate his misery, but his songs echoed the harshness of his life, an orphan since childhood, abandoned even by his once proud younger brother. Yu yearned to awaken like his brother did, seeking intermediaries promising such awakening. He quit his job, trusting them with all his savings, only to be deceived. They flattered and promised protection, citing his brother's status as a renowned hunter. Yu endured degrading tasks, only to become a low-level awakened pawn. Despite his awakened abilities, Yuan remained the lowest rank, only slightly stronger than an ordinary person. Those he trusted turned their backs due to his low status, treating him as a stepping stone. They initially clung to him because of his brother's fame. Yuan faced media scrutiny and criticism for supposedly exploiting his brother's reputation, drowning in debt and receiving coldness even from his once proud brother. The fame you gained after awakening, it's because I nurtured you, right? Yun bitterly recalled the words, because you raised a lowly pawn like me. Isn't that something to be proud of? He couldn't bear the humiliation, cascading from one misery to another. After Yun lost both of his legs in one of his ventures into the dungeon, his younger brother refused to treat him, plunging Yuan's life deeper into despair. The cold gaze and words from his brother remained etched in Yuan's mind. This brother of yours, please just live quietly, don't obstruct me any further. Ewan lived in silent suffering, enduring humiliation just to get through each day, his eyes devoid of life, lacking vitality, while he worked and muttered to himself, yes, I deserve to be abandoned, a brother incapable of even the lowest ranked hunter skills, just a parasite trying to glean some benefit from his younger brother. Yes, that's right, not a single word was wrong when it described me as a lowly hunter surviving until now in these dungeons where people die every day solely due to the skill of leeching off others. Talking about the title of nurturer, though just a low-ranked hunter and seemingly useless skill, it still had an impact on you and surroundings. Just by caring about others, opening up and being friendly with them, just by uttering the keyword hey in there, those who received it would become influence, receiving a bit of strength to develop. That was the basic skill of a nurturer. With that ability, Yuan couldn't survive on his own in the dungeon. That title only made him a tiny support needing to cling on to others. He was merely a person standing in the background, so even if his teammates fell, a parasite like him would still live, thanks to the nurturing person possessing another passive skill, which was the key for Yuan to survive. The real reason he was still alive while everyone else had perished was the supplementary skill of the nurturer called the final reward. When the skills and stats of the target's influence are transferred to you, not only that, but the ability after transfer also doubles. However, there is a harsh reality, that is, when the skills of the influence person are transferred to you, that is also the final moment of the influence person. Indeed, the condition to activate this damn skill is that the target user must die in front of Eugen, who is the boss lying in a pool of blood and no longer breathing. A arrogant bully is also in critical condition of about to be torn apart by a three-headed dragon monster, a top-class creature that appeared in a dungeon level D. The desperate cries of the arrogant bully before dying have caused Yu Jin to panic truly. Before him is the poisonous curse dragon Kane Lachidas. It is a top-ranked dragon. Even hunters of class S find it difficult to confront. Until now, those who encountered it were considered dead. But no one knew why a top-ranked creature appeared in a D-level dungeon. Eugene immediately recognized that there are still living creatures and instantly stretched its long neck and sharp teeth toward Eugene, who is also not standing still waiting to die. Thanks to the power transmitted by the boss, which has been doubled in strength, Eugene quickly dodged its attack and fled with all the power he could muster, aiming straight for the dungeon door at the fastest speed possible. But this time the creature's rank is too high, its speed is too fast, Yujin almost has no chance at all. Just one swing of its tail has blocked the retreat route as well as thrown Yujin tens of meters away, fear creeping up his limbs. This is the feeling of facing imminent death. Standing in front of it, Yujin had no chance of escape. Not only that, 
The passive skill also causes Yu Jin to receive memories of the boss. Those are memories of desperation before death. Yu Jin's legs were no longer under control, and the Grim Reaper was getting closer day by day. Yes, this is the feeling of death beyond. Closing his eyes and waiting for the worst, there was no way to resist it. Then a loud explosion. The sky and the earth resounded with the painful cry of La Chita's. Yu Jin's younger brother, La Yu, appeared and snatched Yu Jin from the jaws of death, taking him to safety. His younger brother turned to confront La Chita's. Yu Jin trembled, his voice full of concern. Wait, even if it's you, you can't duel with it hand to hand. Ignoring Yu Jin's warnings, Yu Han boldly activated the skill series, Lamb Leaf Dance. A series of green lights appeared flying around Yu Han at lightning speed. He leaped up and immediately launched three sword strikes towards Lachita's. Truly a skilled hunter, he had already caused quite a bit of trouble for Lachita's as soon as he faced off, not losing the advantage. Hun continued to display his skills. Fire seal, a purple flame emitted from his sword. Then he straightened up and delivered a powerful blow to one of Late's heads, too powerful. That's what Yu Jin saw in his younger brother. But this dragon has up to three heads. In a moment, Hun almost hit the deadly poison from one remaining head. But luckily, he managed to avoid it. But the direction of that toxic strain was flying straight towards Yu Jin, who was sitting helpless, unable to move. Hun, as fast as lightning, managed to stand in front and activate the giant shield skill to block that deadly poison strain. However, he couldn't block it all, and still got hit by the small poisonous rays shooting out. Using all his strength, Han used the Black Flame Seal to brush away that deadly poison, but his sword had also been corroded, losing a part. Han continued to rush into the fierce battle with Lita's. Yu Jin stood outside, realizing uncomfortably, he's not fighting comfortably because he has to protect himself, all because of him, all because of him. He just obstructs and causes trouble. Yu Jin kept blaming himself. Then his body, full of despair, moved closer to La Cheetah's. Yu Jin took out his sword and rushed to stab Lachita's in front of Han's bewildered and amazed eyes, then tossed the sword aside after catching Lachita's attention. Yuan also wants to discard his own life. You laugh in agony, haha. Even if you save me, I will only be a hindrance to you. Just let me die here. If I die here, you won't have to do all the annoying things like organizing funerals, right? I'm so tired. Since when have we been so distant like this? But it's okay. Even those living in hell will feel happy, so don't worry about me anymore. Yuan stood in front facing the scorching death. Only death can free you from this hellish life, and also to prevent you from becoming a parasite, a hindrance. But Hun doesn't want that. With all his might, he rushes to where his brother is about to be attacked by late BN's claws. Isn't it your brother, not me? Who's the hindrance? Why do you always appear whenever Yin faces difficulties? Why do you have to say such cold, cruel words? Why do you have to sacrifice yourself like that? Surely there must be a reason for you to behave like this toward your older brother, your father, and even your mother. A big explosion followed the collision, and drops of blood stained the ground. Surprised eyes, fearful eyes. Yuan is still alive, but his younger brother is no longer. That single blow from Lotch Cheetahs left Hun severely injured and collapsed on his older brother. Hun, we were wrong, weren't we? Since when was it like this? Since the day our parents passed away, no one can replace our bond. We're just two brothers in this world. On Han's back are the claws of the poisonous dragon, deeply embedded in his flesh. Yet for the sake of his older brother, he still tries to find a way for him to live. Listen carefully to what I say. Lachita will sleep for 10 hours each year. So hide. Hide well for a few more hours. When it sleeps, seize the opportunity to escape. Hun, exhausted, whispers these words, continuously spitting blood, showing that he's at his limit. Yuan remembers the cold actions his younger brother has shown him before. He used to feel that something wasn't right. Why was his younger brother so cruel back then? Why did he always consider Yuan a nuisance, a hindrance? Why did his younger brother risk his life to protect him? It's all lies, isn't it? Hun takes out a piece of Mon stone from his pocket and hands it to Yuan, hoping he can escape from this place. Yulin looks fearful at his younger brother. It's the fear of losing his loved one. With his last words of concern, Hun collapses on a Yulin's shoulder, his last breath escaping him. Yulin sits there motionless, 
his whole body stiffening like stone after realizing his younger brother's life has ebbed away. He weakly calls out his brother's name, filled with despair. Hun, Yuen, but there's no response. The activation of the title Nurturing Skills Enhancement for the last time is the final message informing Yuen that his beloved younger brother is no longer alive. The transferred strength has doubled, allowing Yuen to stand up, evade, and carry his brother's body. He holds Han's body tightly, now growing cold, and Yuen cries silently. As time passes, he feels the surge of his younger brother's fierce energy flowing through his body, gently laying his younger brother down. Yuen summons a dark, deathly colored dagger aimed at the vicious dragon's head charging towards him. The dragon's head disappears with just one strike. La Cheetah's roars in pain. Yuen stands there, contemplative, not just because of the strength but also because Han's memories are flooding into his mind. Indeed, all the indifference, the bitterness that Han had shown him, were just a facade. Yuen was always the one his younger brother cared for the most, because Han was a level-headed hunter. He had to grit his teeth and distance himself from his older brother because he didn't want their enemies to know that was his actual's heel. Hun always kept an eye on and protected Yuen. He didn't want his older brother to become a hunter, because then he wouldn't be protected by the law anymore. The incident where Yuen lost both his legs had truly saddened and enraged Hun towards those who caused it. Hun didn't want to heal those legs because he didn't want Yuen to continue plunging into the abyss a place full of dangers with no cure for his legs, for his older brother. It was an incredibly difficult decision that seemed to have exhausted Hun. But to ensure his older brother's safety, he had to endure the pain of tearing himself away and returning to the abyss with the terrifying abilities of an S-class hunter, doubled in strength, not to mention the extreme hatred that fueled that strength even more. La Cheetahs had become the place for Yuen to cast away all his resentment, humiliation, suffering and, most importantly, the one who took away his beloved brother's life, Yu Jin, like a madman losing his mind, fell to his knees, facing the lonely dragon, enduring its fiercest attacks, without flinching. Why bother with defense when in Yu Jin's mind all he wanted was to tear apart the monster that had taken away the most important person, his fallen comrade, defeated by the lone dragon? Along with it came a heavy downpour, as if wanting to merge with Yu Jin's loss. He stood there alone once more, the last survivor, but accompanied by the bitter raindrops, as if to wash away the tears flowing down his anguished face. Yu Jin chuckled, a laughter filled with pain and suffering. Who do you think you are? He said. You won't even tell me half of it. Why? Why do this? I know nothing and am only good at hindering you, but don't worry, I'll come for you soon. As soon as the skill's effect ends, I'll die from the poison of La Cheetah's. I think I no longer have a reason to continue living. This way, I'll get to meet my little brother, the pride of my life. The notification system sounded, declaring it a miracle. Yu Jin had single-handedly slain a dragon. Congratulations, you have achieved the title of Dragon Slayer. Your reward is 10 thatch and 5 essence of grade 1. You receive the dragon's fang sword. You receive a wish stone, capable of granting any wish you desire. Yu Jin stared in astonishment at the stone, wondering if it could truly fulfill any wish. Bring back my little brother, he thought suddenly, but reality is always cruel. The system responded, lacking the ability to resurrect someone who had died. Once hope arose, it sank Yu Jin into despair once again. He screamed into the void, so what can you do after all? What wish can you grant? A sudden idea sparked in Yu Jin's mind. It could help him become stronger than his counterpart, perhaps becoming a mighty hunter, achieving a prideful position. But that's not what I want, he thought. I only want my little brother. That's a greater honor than anything else. I just want to turn back time. Please, turn back time. Let me return to before my little brother's death. I'll live a peaceful life, just as my little brother wished, without getting involved in any damn dungeon. Please, turn back time, back to when I wasn't a fake awakened. Even if I regret my decision, I want this to never happen again. All the wishes were granted. Do you want to turn back time? Yu Jin was asked. Yes, he replied. Immediately, the shining stone emitted a burst of energy. Yu Jin closed his eyes, sinking deep into slumber. He woke up on the sofa in the Abbas Guild's office. This was the day he had come to the broker, the day that had completely changed his life. Suddenly, Yu Jin remembered the need to check. 
He hurriedly went to the door, which slowly opened, revealing the familiar face of his older brother. I've told you so many times not to do anything that could bring you here, he said. Indeed, standing in front of Yujin was his little brother, alive and well. Yujin was stunned. He couldn't control his body and rushed to embrace his brother, filled with happiness. He's alive. Yuyin is alive. He cried. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. I apologize for everything. His little brother, confused, asked loudly what was going on. Yu Jin, his voice gentle, replied, No, it's not you. I just suddenly thought on my way here, you're 25 now, aren't you? No, I'm almost 20, his brother replied. But I've been through a lot on my own. As your older brother, you should know what I've been through. I'm sorry. I won't bring any trouble to you anymore. You don't have to worry about me so much. Han also held onto his respected elder brother tightly. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. Yu Jin said gratefully, relieved that everything had been salvaged. The brothers would once again be inseparable. Yu Jin wanted to devote his entire life to his younger brother. He wanted to forget everything about being an awakened. He didn't want to be a fake awakened anymore. He just wanted to quietly live his simple life beside his brother. However, life doesn't always go as desired. The status window suddenly popped up, startling Yu Jin. Han Yu Jin had been listed as an awakened, granted the title of legend, receiving the Dragon Slayer and Perfect Fosterer titles. The passive skill of my little guy depended on Han Yu Hun's maturity, increasing by 100 points. Even if he wanted to avoid it, he couldn't. Life after turning back time was vastly different from the grim atmosphere before. Now, life was calm, surprisingly harmonious between the two brothers. This atmosphere was strange and unfamiliar to Yu Jin. It had been a long time since he had felt this way. He hesitantly recalled the time before turning back time when the two brothers had a big fight and he had stormed off. But now, things were different. Yu Jin was delighted that they had reconciled. Not only that, but now he was preparing dinner with his younger brother, with dishes he himself had cooked. But there was still a slight unease that Yun felt, and he also couldn't believe that he had become awakened once again. But this time, it was different. He was no longer a mere pawn, regarded as a guinea pig. His title achieved was Dragon Slayer. It was evidence that he had single-handedly defeated a high-level dragon. Up to this point, Yuin still couldn't believe this truth. He checked the status window and found out that he was no longer in the F rank, but in the L rank. This was the first time he had seen this level. It was the legendary rank, even higher than the S rank. Clicking on his title, Yuin discovered he had four additional skills. Accompanying this title, all were level 1 resistance skills, including poison resistance, curse resistance, fear resistance, and a powerful passive skill, Letus's nemesis, meaning he could resist all skills lower than his rank level. With this skill, if encountering a dragon like Letus, he could deal double damage when attacking them. Yuin excitedly thought, perhaps after reversing time, I have become the strongest hunter. Yuin began to have fantasies in his head, imagining a scene where his younger brother faced off against the dragon Lao Cheetahs, and Yuin would appear heroically, saving him from all dangers and saying something cool like, Don't worry, little brother, I'm here, as a true hunter. It was just like facing a three-headed dragon, nothing serious. Oh, hi hi. At that moment, the cool image of Yuin would be deeply engraved in his brother's mind with admiration for his elder brother. He would save the legendary world of Dragon Slayer. Yuin would officially come into existence from this moment on. Yes, that's right. That's how I would become the most famous hunter, yes indeed. Checking which index, it's for sure that I've also been elevated to the S rank, not just the L rank, but when opening the status board, reality slapped Yuin in the face. A stat that couldn't be lower, 6 physical strength, 4 power, 5 agility, 4 mental strength, 2 magic. It means that besides the title and those four additional skills which are of level L, L, his status is still at the F rank. What could turn one into the greatest hunter is just a wild dream. General disappointment filled Yuin's head. He pulled his hair in frustration, feeling like a hopeless fool in the final stage. He sighed deeply. If his physical condition remained the same, how could he make use of those high-level skills now? Ultimately, nothing could be changed, huh? However, the tricky stats had increased to the E rank, and his nurturing title had also changed to Perfect Nurturer, upgrading to the L rank. Upon checking, it also had four skills of the same level. 
Yuan temporarily turned off the debt repayment skill for the last time and began to study the remaining skills. They had ridiculous names. The other skill was my little brat. It allows the subject's growth ability to be doubled with related keywords. Those who receive it will have their ability doubled for three days. Yu exclaimed excitedly, making his brother startle. What? Doubled muscles? You mean if it's combined with another skill? The next skill was also remarkable. It's called my little brat. Really good. It activates when you praise or cheer for the opponent with related keywords in front of at least five people. At that time, the stats and the effects of the encouraged person's skills will increase by the percentage of the number of people present. It's a ridiculously powerful skill. If you praise Hun in front of 100 people, the effect will be 100%, which means it will double. Yuan began to fantasize again with these amazing skills. Not only could he turn his brother into the strongest person, but he could also turn members of ABS into strong individuals. At that time, the ABS gang would be the undefeated champions, and the one standing behind that success would be him. Ha ha. He would become a Vietnamese music king. Ha ha. If everything goes well, he could live a life full of authority, standing above everyone, being cheered by thousands. Just thinking about it made him laugh uncontrollably. While reveling in the clouds with dreams, Yuan once again fell flat on the ground. Yuan clutched his head in despair as the system gave him an extremely awkward keyword. The keyword he received was I love you. Just imagining himself wandering around and telling everyone I love you made Yuan cry. Maybe people would think he's a pervert and call the cops to arrest him. What a futile attempt. Yuan felt like he was falling into an endless abyss once again. The essence of the skills is excellent, but the way they are used is too embarrassing. Yun looked at the last skill, it was called Promising Seedling. Thanks to it, Yuan could identify potential individuals who would awaken soon. Through this, he could nurture and foster those people. They would be influenced by the keywords and awaken with the best potential. While immersed in research, I had to pause as Hun finished cooking rice, and we began our meal with joyous hearts. It had been so long since I had a proper family meal, and I was pleasantly surprised by how delicious Hun's cooking was. He mentioned that his culinary skills had improved while I had been focusing on other things. He emphasized the importance of cooking safely at home, as eating out could pose risks such as food poisoning, especially without access to antidotes. Hung revealed how I used to face difficulties with various factions and renowned organizations, always scheming and causing trouble because I refused to align with them. Instead, I aimed to establish my own faction, a challenging period where I struggled with life's hardships. Hun's recount stirred emotions, and I embraced my younger brother, expressing my concern and care. However, he admitted to avoiding me, fearing that those who sought to harm me might target him as well. He didn't want me to be hurt but understood it was a mistake to distance himself. He apologized, expressing his love and gratitude for my unwavering concern. His words touched me deeply, overwhelming my emotions. I quickly hid my embarrassment by busying myself with serving Han, showering him with affectionate teasing. But he protested, wondering why I apologized and thanked him. He had gone through hardships himself and was now happy for making the right decision. He received a message and had to leave before finishing the meal. As he left, I reminded him to erase the contact details of a broker, suspecting they might be compromised. Han assured him that everything had been taken care of. However, when I mentioned him leaving, he firmly stated that he couldn't leave anymore. He explained the danger outside and insisted on staying with me for safety. I was bewildered by his decision, but didn't argue. He mentioned how he couldn't leave due to the risk to both of us now that our enemies knew of his presence. As he decided to stay, I grew agitated, wanting him to leave the confined space. But he had already made up his mind. Before leaving, he packed his essentials, intending to depart before I returned. However, my older brother, Attentive as always, had arranged for someone to guard the door. It was Sung Han, a trustworthy member of Han's organization, tasked with ensuring my safety. Despite my pleas, he adamantly refused to let me leave, showing no response to my attempts to persuade him. As Sung Han firmly placed his hand on my shoulder, he coldly warned me not to try escaping again. Reluctantly, I acquiesced, realizing my efforts were futile. I had no choice but to comply and step back inside, resigning myself to the circumstances dictated by my older brother's protective measures. 
Sung Han's serious demeanor created an invisible pressure, making Yu Jin feel like a rabbit facing a bear. This pressure was something only experienced hunters could impose. Yu Jin reassured himself not to be afraid, but his fear resistance skills were automatically activated, instantly nullifying in Han's eyes. The A level hunter was no longer fearsome, but rather like a cute puppy to Yu Jin's timid rabbit. Yu Jin raised his face, his tone defiant, demanding Han to let go. He questioned the legality and his personal freedom rights, labeling Han's actions as tyranny and threatening to call the police. However, Han remained unmoved by his loud threats. With a firm grip on Yu Jin's collar, Han questioned if Yu Jin enjoyed being disciplined, comparing him to a well behaved puppy. Yu Jin sighed, realizing the futility of his resistance. As Han guided him inside, Yu Jin struggled, but suddenly his latent skills activated. He grabbed Han's face, twisted his ear, and observed him seriously, using his skill to raid Han's state. He noticed the possibility of awakening Han's S-level abilities, but Han seemed unaffected. He stated that Han would obey him if he influenced him, implying that discovering an S-level hunter and regaining freedom would be simple tasks. However, to achieve this, Yu Jin had to utter a specific keyword, which proved challenging. Han, now visibly angry after the ear twist, was contemplating restricting his older brother, the troublesome advisor of the gang leader. Looking at Han, Yu Jin felt a sense of desperation. Later, when Hun returned and found his older brother lying on the floor amid scattered belongings, he asked if Yu Jin was comfortable. Yu Jin's desperate plea for a change in his situation didn't move Hun. He acknowledged his older brother's discomfort, but emphasized the need to wait until they became the strongest faction in the country. It was a comforting proposition, but Yu Jin couldn't help but cry, feeling as though his life force was draining away. Unable to wait any longer, Yu Jin was racking his brain to figure out how to change with his skill set. Upon reconsideration, he thought he should quickly search for potential hunters and carefully nurture them, then persuade them to commit to becoming bodyguards to repay the kindness of his parents. Starting with this illusion, he would create his own League of Justice, his own mighty army, so Hun wouldn't be able to complain anymore. Yu Jin enthusiastically told Hun that he would search for great hunters and train them. Eventually, he found his own direction. He would search for and awaken potential individuals into great hunters. The initial steps would be quite challenging, having to locate and convince them, but it was better than finding children to nurture. Yu Jin would nurture them well and turn them into his exclusive hunters. Confidently, Yu Jin suggested to Hun, if you can find me a great bodyguard, then let me roam freely. Hun, not reassured, asked how Yu Jin planned to find one. But Yu Jin evaded a direct answer, vaguely stating he had his ways. Han raised an eyebrow suspiciously. You've awakened, haven't you? Immediately, he grasped Yu Jin's shoulder and pressed, Do you have the ability to find super great individuals or awaken them? Yu Jin hesitated, fearful of revealing his true ability, lest Han lock him away again. He had to lie, claiming his ability was mediocre, only discerning between weak and strong awakening only one person per month. Only then did Hun return to normalcy. Yet Yu Jin smirked, thinking, if only that were all. He laughed. It won't be long before a center for awakenings is established, reducing the focus on you. Arif nodded. Indeed, that center's establishment is timely. He nonchalantly remarked that it was just a useless skill. Nothing to worry about. Yu Jin vowed to find a great a hunter, pleading for a chance. After some coaxing, Hun reluctantly agreed to Yu Jin's proposal. Yu Jin silently chuckled, pleased that Hun allowed him freedom, thinking he'd bring back hunters from grade A to grade S to dazzle Hun. Continuing in his fantasy, he would establish a guild even more powerful than Abbas. The next day, at the Korean Hunter Association's registration office, Yu Jin was escorted by Han. Han, a renowned grade A hunter, was easily recognized. Despite the anticipation for a fearsome grade A protector, Everyone was surprised to find Yu Jin, a mere grade E hunter. Yu Jin felt bitter hearing the gossip about his level. Nonetheless, accustomed to criticism, he brushed it off and accepted the money his brother gave him for shopping. Surprised by the substantial amount, he was warmly welcomed by shop staff. They presented him with various high level gear, attracting attention. After much deliberation, Yu Jin selected suitable equipment, significantly boosting his power to grade C with just one deposit. 
Additionally, Yu Jin desired to purchase more items. After shopping, he met Han outside, expressing his intention to visit a barbecue shop in Juaidu, where a girl named Parkin, an A-grade ice mage after awakening, could be found. Yu Jin wanted to quickly locate her and nurture her to regain his freedom. At a market in Juadu, they searched but found no one familiar with the name Parkin. They wandered around until a commotion ahead caught their attention. The girl from inside a barbecue shop was loudly arguing, sounding very much like the person you were looking for. When she ran past you, you confirmed she was the one you were looking for. However, she ran very fast, quickly out of your reach, throwing the half-eaten hot dog to Sung Han. You hastily chased after her. However, her speed was truly extraordinary, even before awakening. She was as fast as lightning. Yet, by now, Yu Jin had expensive equipment to support him, activating the special ability of the belt he was wearing. Immediately, Yu Jin's movement speed increased significantly. He rushed like the wind, truly the power of money. Even though she was fast, it took him a while to catch up to her. Yu Jin hurriedly called out, Are you Parkin? Are you PK Yim? After a moment, she stopped. However, she mistook Yu Jin for someone sent by her uncle to take her back. The girl spoke up defiantly. Old man, I won't be coming back. With that, she turned to run across the street, oblivious to the danger. A car was speeding towards her, causing her to freeze in fear, unable to move. Yu Jin dashed forward, embracing her tightly, taking the full force of the oncoming car. The impact was intense sending them both flying several meters. The driver, now with a pale face from causing the accident, and pedestrians were shot. Fortunately, Yu Jin, being a fake awakened, had higher endurance than usual. Despite the pain, he was more concerned about the girl's well-being. Are you okay? Are you hurt anywhere? He asked as the girl sat bewildered on him. With a hint of surprise, she asked, You, you're a hunter. Ah, the first encounter with P.K. Yim had left quite an impression, with his heroic act of saving her. Though meeting him wasn't as beautiful as she had imagined, it was still a success. After the somewhat secure meeting, Yu Jin invited her to eat to get acquainted. This girl not only ran fast but also ate heartily. Yu Jin wondered why she didn't eat at her uncle's meat shop. Why eat here? He asked curiously. The girl bluntly replied, It's boring there, just a waste of money. Yu Jin expressed his curiosity. You're the little brother of the Abbas gang's boss, right? Why would someone like you look for me? Yim replied half-jokingly, maybe because I sense your good energy. However, the girl didn't joke. Yu Jin stood up, thanked for the meal, and was about to leave when he hurriedly stopped and explained. Your uncle told me. I'm an orphan. So he made up a story. I knew your parents in the past, and he helped me a lot after they passed away. Even though it's a bit late, I still want to repay his kindness. I'm sorry, I feel really embarrassed, but for a very noble reason. Impressed by Yu Jin's acting skills, Yin felt excited. Yu Jin sensed her potential and wanted to help her awaken her abilities. He explained that he could awaken others and help them unlock their potential. Yu Jin assured Yin that he could help her become a hunter if she wanted. After gradually gaining Yin's trust, Yu Jin asked once again, do you want to make a contract with me and become a hunter? Seeing her hesitation, Yu Jin displayed a bit more to reassure her. He opened the window and took out a pen and a contract. Seeing this for the first time left Yin excited. Yu Jin added humorously, This is normal. If you awaken, you'll have one too. All you need to do is sign it. Yin received the contract and began to read it. There were two clauses that caught her attention to keep Yu Jin's abilities a secret and to become his bodyguard for a year. Yin couldn't hide her surprise. I need protection. Even though I can awaken others, I'm just a weak target. There are people who want to harm me, Yu Jin explained. Yin replied with a statement that made Yu Jin feel a bit embarrassed. Don't you feel ashamed to be protected by a middle school kid like me? Yu Jin chuckled, feeling slightly embarrassed. What's there to be ashamed of? If you awaken, you're stronger than me. Yin's eye showed a hint of sadness. Then she asked, If I awaken, can I be independent? Though unsure of her intentions, Yu Jin affirmed that it was possible. Whether awakened or not, everyone is equal. Listen to me, awakening doesn't make a difference. Anyway, are you willing to sign? Yu Jin asked again, sensing her uncertainty. Yin, feeling a bit rushed, urged Yu Jin to slow down. 
At least I need to read through the terms carefully. What if I'm being tricked? Even though you're persuasive, your heart is not like those people, Yin said, emphasizing her need for a guardian. Despite Yujin's multi-level marketing like smooth talk, his heart wasn't like those people. He added, look, you must ensure that all terms are fair for you. Given your age, you may not be accustomed to these matters. So, you still need a guardian. Mentioning the guardian, Yin's mood immediately changed. She didn't look directly at Yujin but asked with a voice full of frustration, what if the guardian exploits me? Yujin, not fully understanding Yin's intention, asked, what do you mean by that? She replied with a hint of confusion. Why have a guardian? It's useless if they exploit me. Whether it's the contract or anything else, I'm just being used. The story hadn't fully unfolded yet when outside the door there was already a loud argument with extremely harsh words. Bat Yim, you dog, where are you? That was the uncle of the girl Yim was searching for. But his aggressive attitude indicated that this encounter wouldn't end well for Yim. He didn't even bother to notice Yu Jin charging straight towards Yim. As he approached, he intimidated the girl with terrible words. Yim, terrified, could only shrink back, ignoring whatever he intended to do. The uncle, with a violent grip, tried to drag Yim away, intending to give her a severe beating. But Yu Jin intervened just in time. Despite only being at an intermediate level, Yu Jin was still alert. Plus, with a new set of skills acquired through his recent training, he easily subdued Yim's uncle. Now, he had a chance to observe the girl again. She was thin, her clothes worn out, and her shoes barely holding up. Yujin finally understood what she meant by mentioning her guardian. Ah, so this is why you said it would be better if there wasn't a guardian. Yujin remarked, breaking the silence. Yim, distressed, revealed her suffering. He's a demon. He took all my parents' inheritance, doesn't care about me at all. He just exploits my labor beats me whenever he's displeased. I only have one old mattress to sleep on. Sometimes I have to wander the streets with a plastic bag over my head. Yim's candid words stirred up those around them. They condemned her uncle as a terrible person who abused children. Enraged at being criticized by a child, he erupted, cursing at Yim. How dare you humiliate me? While Yu Jin stepped aside, the uncle aggressively approached Yim. Come here, I'll teach you a lesson. But with just a slight movement, Yujin made the uncle stumble forward, crashing his face onto the table. Afterward, he pretended to care about the old man, warning him to be careful because there was spilled soda on the floor. The old man, feeling humiliated, was about to explode in rage, but seeing Yujin's calm demeanor made him hesitate. Yujin remained silent, then suddenly yelled and pretended to fall, causing the uncle to fall forward and hit his face on the table once again. This time, Yujin pretended to show concern. Oh no, aren't you okay, sir? I'm sorry I slipped. Outside, the ground shook violently as if there was an earthquake. Han, rushing in, warned everyone of the danger. There was a monster rampaging outside. Indeed, a monstrous creature with a grotesque appearance, completely black, tentacles like an octopus, and numerous eyes filled with malice, was raking havoc. Han instructed everyone to flee while he stayed to confront the creature. Despite Han's efforts, the creature was relentless in its attack, forcing Han to struggle to escape its grasp. Meanwhile, Yim and the others ran for their lives. Yim stumbled and fell due to her own clumsiness, but her uncle, indifferent, abandoned her to her fate. Yim lay there, in pain, realizing her uncle's callousness. With no shred of compassion, she awaited her impending death. However, Yujin arrived just in time, using a nearby table to block the creature's deadly tentacles. Yujin helped the girl up, holding her hand tightly as he led her away. The caring and concerned attitude of Yujin warmed the girl's once cold heart, which had been orphaned for so long without feeling such care. She knew that finally, there was someone worth trusting. Yin was led towards the exit by Yujin, who reassured her to go down there while he would return to assist. Drawing from his past experiences, Yujin recognized the creature. Though not powerful, it was troublesome. Sung Han, being primarily a defensive hunter, lacked the appropriate offensive skills to confront such a creature. Yujin utilized his knowledge to devise a plan to deal with it. However, Yim, determined, held on to Yujin's hand, insisting, Uncle, let me go with you. Please awaken me. I just need to be able to participate in this battle. Yujin held her shoulders, 
advising her, it's not as simple as that, you know. Do you think being awake means you can fight proficiently? Do you want to wake up in a safe environment? I can't let you take such a risk. I can't let a child like you fight alone. So now, please evacuate to safety. Do you understand? After finishing speaking, Yuin hurriedly turned back to where Sung Han was fighting, while thinking of ways to defeat the monster. Upon meeting Sung Han, Yuin immediately suggested, Let's use your tactics. I have a plan. Following Yin's plan, Sung Han erected a wall of earth around the creature, isolating it, and then from above, he created a dome, forming a sturdy shield made of earth, trapping the creature inside like a giant cage. Yun began to execute his plan, taking out a black circular object, a level A grade poisonous item the had bought for emergencies. His plan was to isolate the creature within the shield and then use the poisonous item to eliminate it without harming anyone else. However, when Yun was about to act, the shield turned out to be empty, and they were worried as they didn't know where the creature had gone. Suddenly, the creature emerged from the underground sewer tunnels, swiftly grabbing Yuan and lifting him high, demonstrating their miscalculation. Realizing they had only encountered the creature in the dungeon where there were no sewer tunnels, Yuan feared for their lives. However, unexpectedly, Yin appeared with an umbrella in hand, repeatedly striking the distracted creature allowing Yuan to break free. The siblings then ran for their lives together, but the danger was not over yet, as the creature was still chasing them closely, reminiscent of a scene from a horror movie. However, they still had time to talk. Yuan revealed that when they saved her, she felt reassured knowing there was someone genuinely protecting her. She desired strength not just for self-defense, but also to make her own decisions and not rely on others for protection. Encouraged by Yin's words about having the strength to do so, Yun asked for guidance, wanting to see how strong she could become. As the conversation concluded, danger loomed once more and Yuin quickly grabbed Yin's hand before the tentacles struck down. A beam of green light flashed, followed by the condensation of water in the air into an ice shield, blocking the creature's attack. Yin had officially awakened as an ice witch, much to Yuin's joy, exclaiming, I've been promoted to S-Class. With you in support, Yin's awakening bypassed the A-class straight to S-class. Meanwhile, Sung Han, observing the events, was astonished. He shouted a warning about another creature still lurking behind. However, it was too late as the creature's tentacles tightly wrapped around Yuan's hand. Nevertheless, Yuan was not startled, but rather focused, swiftly activating her skill, hucking the ice, turning her body into a lightning bolt. Her spear transformed into a colossal ice spear, smashing towards the creature, annihilating it. Sung Han shielded himself, but Yuin, still inexperienced with her newfound power, went a bit overboard. Despite this, Yuin's satisfied smile showed her contentment. Indeed, she was a snow witch, but also just a girl with a radiant smile, the happiness she had long sought. However, the creature was not completely destroyed it could regenerate into a more formidable form from its body parts. A widespread urger skill was needed, and Han, along with his dark fire seal, appeared. With just one move, they incinerated the creature into dust. Yuan felt impressed by Han's overwhelming power, realizing there was still much to learn. Thus, another S-class hunter had joined the team, and Yuan had found her first bodyguard. It seemed like the younger brother would be pleased when the older brother found a bodyguard as promised, but that cold, sharp gaze didn't show it. Han rushed over and grabbed his older brother's shoulder, his voice full of concern. Do you know how worried I was on the way here? That's why I kept telling you to stay at home. Do you even understand? He truly wanted to lock his brother up to prevent him from joining the fight. Yuan quickly introduced Yim to Han, puffing his chest out proudly. She's S-class, you know. Now you don't have to worry because my brother has an S-class bodyguard. Han replied, seeming unimpressed. She doesn't seem mature enough. Where's her guardian? Yuan scratched his head in response. Well, her guardian is a terrible person, so I'm thinking of becoming her sponsor. Han immediately objected to Yuan becoming Yim's sponsor because he felt Yuan was just a minor figure. Sun Han explained to Yim the significant responsibility of being a sponsor, akin to being a parent. Therefore, Han didn't want his older brother to have to look after someone else. However, Yuan still worried about Yim, knowing her uncle was a terrible person. Nonetheless, this decision was entirely Yim's, not forced upon her. 
Despite the explanations, the younger brothers still vehemently oppose, dragging their older brother away. He was concerned because there had been many incidents where sponsors were abused by the awakened, so he believed that an S-class like Yin wouldn't listen to an F-class like Yuin. I saw my older brother intimately speaking up, demanding the right to be Yim's guardian, but she disagreed. Then it turned into a heated argument with neither willing to yield. Yin was caught in the middle as two young men, both S-level, fought over her due to their uncontrolled powers. In the struggle, Yim accidentally dislocated Yu Jin's shoulder. Despite the pain, he spoke sternly. Yu Jin, I taught you better than this. Matters concerning guardianship are Yim's right. You have no say in it. Moreover, as a gang leader, you should rejoice that I brought you an S-level member. After some lecturing, my brother backed off without further involvement, leaving Yim and Yu Jin to settle their dispute. Later, Yin dared to speak ill of the gang leader, Abbas, which was far from her previous public image. It seemed I used to like him for his handsome appearance. Yet after accidentally dislocating Yu Jin's shoulder, he was horrified and advised her to stay away. Yim apologized for her lack of control over her power. Yu Jin then gently put her shoe back on, apologizing for the damage. Yim was astonished by how heartless her uncle treated her. The next day, Yu Jin took Yim shopping for a new pair of shoes, displaying genuine care. Yim teased him, saying his caring gestures made her heart flutter. She reminisced about romantic scenes from movies until a fly interrupted. In her attempt to shoo it away, they accidentally hit each other. Yim realized Yu Jin's concern may not match her parents, but his declaration of love caught her off guard, bringing her happiness. After enduring tough times, she found a new family and possibly a happier life. Meanwhile, Yim's uncle, driven by greed, returned, pretending to care but solely seeking profit. Yim revealed her S-level status, causing his joy. However, she declared she would move out as she had signed a contract with Yu Jin. Despite his reluctance, her uncle had no choice. Later, Yu Jin invoked a special law allowing hunters to become independent at 14, asserting his independence. He recorded evidence of his uncle's abuse and threatened to expose it if he ever approached Yim again. Yu Jin accused his uncle of lacking the qualifications to be a guardian, abandoning Yim in danger, and exploiting her labor. He warned him against further interference, or he'd face the consequences. The old man intended to use force, but Yim had no choice but to use a bit of strength to defend herself. It seemed retaliation was a minute, but Yim presented an innocent face, speaking softly. Oh my, why do you always resort to violence, uncle? Despite her innocent appearance, Yim's hands had a different, gentle movement. With just a few gestures, her umbrella shattered into several pieces, emitting strands of aura. This made the uncle start to feel fear. He realized he wasn't facing a middle school kid he bullied daily. Instead, he stood before a formidable beast now, draining him of all strength. He was speechless as Yim slowly approached, the umbrella now a spherical object in her hand. Uncle, you're not worthy of my gratitude. How can you call yourself a guardian when you can't even buy a decent umbrella? Honestly, I want nothing from you. I only did this to make you pay for what you've done. Do you know why I let you off? It's because to me, you're just a petty matter. Someone like you isn't worth my concern. I advise you to settle down and be an ordinary person. If you still want to interfere with me and cause trouble with this uncle here, 